Okay, so it's only been a week since the 125 shot video we posted, and Richard's been working all week, changing gears. Uh, he filmed it, sent it to me, and the video starts with the math lesson. Hey guys, class is in session. Um, I, I wanted to show y'all a little bit of math. <clears throat> um, first of all, <clears throat> I want to explain why I went from 373s to 456. Um, when I originally had goals or plans for this car, I was running quarter mile. So 373s with nitrous and a stock cam was a good choice. Um, I have since switched tracks and run an eighth mile at a different track now and I really like it. So that's the reason for 456s. So on the top, um, just to show you the percentage difference in the gear ratios, 456 divided by 373 equals 1.22 uh, or 22%. So now I have 22% more torque multiplication. So that's, that's a good thing. So <clears throat> with just saying, you know, stock 5.0 makes 225 horsepower. You multiply that by 1.22, you know, 22%. And it comes out to 275. Now, when you change gears, you do not change how much horsepower your car has but you change the rate of acceleration. So the gear change, if you were to um, try to put a number on it as far as how it feels, it's the equivalent of 50 horsepower gained. Now truly, you did not gain 50 horsepower, but go race your car and start, like if you got a five speed, uh, go race it and start off in second and see how it feels versus starting off in first. And, and you know, it's a big difference. So, uh, so that's, that's the math. There we go, that's kind of the, the top portion of the big picture. Um, what I was saying earlier in the video was uh, AOD versus T5. Uh, it's just not fair. Uh, the AOD has a 240 first gear, um, and with 373s, your first gear ratio comes out to 8.952. Um, if you have a five speed with 373s, um, you have a 335 first gear, almost one full number different, and you multiply it out and your first gear ratio is 12.4955. You come over here, the difference in that is 1.395, almost a 40% difference. That is huge. So, um, you know, you always hear the, the debates as, you know, what's faster, an automatic or a, or a stick? and uh, most people root for the automatics um, being quicker. You know, if you've ever owned a Mustang with an AOD, the cards are not stacked in your favor. So 456s was my choice. My original plan was to put a gear set out of a 4R70W in this transmission. And that would give me a, instead of a 240 first gear, it would be like a 280, 284. That's a pretty good jump. So I'd, I'd have 373s, but I would have the first gear of a car geared 410. Um, that's expensive and that's time consuming. So I, I went with 456s. Um, I was also gonna put a converter in it, but that's also expensive. And I just wanted to uh, just go big on the gear. So my solution to um, changing the transmission gears and putting the converter in it was just go to 456 and keep it with a stock cam and spray it right out of the hole. So that's kind of, that's my math uh, and my logic or my reasoning method to the madness in a nutshell. Hey, hey, it's, it's uh, in the garage and it's jacked up. So I'm about to pull it apart. This is not my favorite job, but I am very, uh, very much looking forward to racing this thing with 456s. Um, <clears throat> it, it's a low gear, um, but AOD only has a 2.4 first gear ratio, or a 240, where uh, your typical five speed Mustang, the first gear ratio is 335. So the AOD is at a great disadvantage as far as gearing goes. Even, you know, an AOD with 373s versus a five speed with 373s. Uh, 
it's not the same story at the end of the track. So we're going to remedy that. Got the rear end all the way torn down and in pieces now. Uh, you know, tell the, the axles are out. Uh, just a, a little note on this side. My backing plate's bent. So that's, whoops. That's a, another issue. What the heck is going on? <clears throat> Oval team. I don't think they call it round team. The mug is round. The jar is round. Seinfeld quote. Anyway, so my backing plate's bent. So that just makes my brake problems um, worse. So I uh, got another backing plate to put on this side. And then hopefully everything will be uh, super wonderful. Uh, back to this. We're going to the 456 gears. Uh, last night I tried to put the cross pin in. And <clears throat> with a 456, the pinion gear is much smaller. Uh, the reason that is important to note is that when your pinion gear is smaller, it makes your ring gear thicker. Well, with, with this gear set, and I guess with others as well, um, you can't get your cross pin in. So what I did <clears throat> is I took a grinder and took a little bit of material off of that tooth. Let's see. Yep. I don't know. Can you see that? Baby, don't kick that. Um, anyway, so that's what I did. I did that with a cutoff wheel, a jacked up cutoff wheel. I don't recommend that. Grinding with a cutoff wheel is um, <clears throat> it's not ideal. Uh, show you a little trick I did though uh, to keep from getting crap all in there, steel dust and you know grinding, shavings, filings, stuff. I put that on there to protect my carrier. So anyways, Whoa. nice little trick. Thank you for the sound effect. That was lovely, Michaela. I don't really know what that means. Uh, oh, and another thing, just, just a little tip. These bolts that retain the cross pin uh, come from the factory with Loctite. So they can be a little bit of a challenge to, to get out. <clears throat> Most combination wrenches are 12 point. You really need a six point to, uh, to take that out. So uh, if you strip, you strip this bolt out, um, I don't know what to tell you. That it, just expect a lot of frustration. <laughs> so anyway, that's the update. Um, I've got my shims uh, in there behind the pinion bearing now, so hopefully they're right. Stay tuned. Hey guys, check this mess out. So earlier I said um, that I had a, a bent backing plate, and one may ask, how does that happen? Well, check this out. This is some uh, evidence. I have never seen this before. This is a, I'm assuming this is a Ranger axle that has been converted to four lug. Anyway, that's uh, <clears throat> that is some amazing stuff right there. So this car had been in a wreck, or at least it's been slid sideways, probably into a curb, and broke the axle or bent the flange. When it did that, it also got the backing plate, and uh, for lack of a better term, it also got the tub. So there's some damage to the that inner fender or fender well area on this car. But anyway, I just wanted to show y'all that. That is uh, <laughs> definitely noteworthy. Vinny, Vidi, Vici. I came, I saw, I conquered. I got the backing plate changed out. I went ahead and ins installed a new wheel cylinder too while I was at it. <sighs> Drum brakes, man, they are not my favorite. Um, you know, my dad was born in 47. It ain't nothing to him to deal with them. But for me, I have to... Look at my picture, take it apart, put it back together, take it back apart because I forgot something, put it back together. So it's, it's a hassle. Um, I also want to show you some other damage on this car. So over here, you can see on the lower control arm, it's got a ninja chop in it. About where the spring is. And the uh, uh, emergency brake cable has got a nice kink in it. Um, poor car's just had a hard life. And up here, you can see... 
Um, I've had to do a little hammer work in here because the lip, uh, this lip right in here was all peeled back, like the tire grabbed it and ripped it kind of outward or forward. So anyways, that had to be remedied. I'm running 275, 50, uh, 15 drag radials and they, they run pretty tight. I don't have quad shocks on it anymore. But just to show you, we're making progress. I'm gonna slip an axle in there, uh, fill it up with oil, and it will have 456s. Yes. Hey guys, the 370. Oh man, it's so dark over here. I'm sorry. The 373s are out. The 456s are in. What you're looking at is torque, 22% uh, more torque with this gear. So I have high hopes. I'm gonna show you another little trick, um, I think. So the front end is down on the tires, the back end's high with the jack stands. So you can put your additive in before you even put the cover on because it's not going to run out. So that, that's just easier than trying to squeeze it in through the fill hole. So uh, just wanted to show you that. Woo! Mama's home. She's coming in hot. <laughs> oh, crazy girl. Anyway, so that's the trick. Put the stinky stuff in before you put the cover on. All right, guys, we are heading to the track. Uh, Denzel's going along. Uh, he's going to race the 95 tonight. I'm going to try it out on radials. Uh, he's used to slick, so maybe a bit of a learning curve, but I've got the, the 88 behind me on the trailer. Uh, we are fired up, uh, ready for some action. Not didn't really go great for the 95. Got a little Carnage Asada. Um, broke the threaded part off the shift handle last night. Um, so I was trying. I was. Um, I missed third, and that's that's when I missed it. Uh, it just it, it came off the, the the shift knob came off in my hand. Uh, here it is. There it is. Broke. <coughs> Slap off. So. Um, it just, that's okay. You know, it's just one of those nights. Uh, for any guys that have an SN95 and, and are tall, this was a, a nice little fix for that. I've got the shifter moved back. Um, these plates were laser cut. I didn't fab those myself. I just uh, drew them out and had uh, uh, my cousin uh, burn them out for me. And that's how, how it goes. Um, this car also has uh extenders uh for the the seat track so the, the seat goes further back which puts me further away from uh, third gear so that's the that's what happened last night broke broke my handle i thought about wrapping it in electrical tape and trying to race again but it just just didn't feel right on call it a night so uh next time i'll have a uh, probably a pro 5 all Pro 50 handle and I'll run it on slicks and we'll try to get footage of that. All right, here's a look at the time slips. This is with 456 gears. Um, the timing was at 10 degrees. I didn't advance it. <clears throat> I didn't have a whole lot of time last night, so I just I just made a pass. I did put new plug wires on it. Um, and after that run, it just didn't feel good. I, I could not believe I ran another 940. Uh, going from a 373 to a 456, I thought surely it's gonna be quicker, um, but that that didn't that didn't happen. My TPS voltage was at 0 
which is low. Um, I turned it up to like 996. So next time I go, the TPS voltage will be correct and I'll bump my timing back up to 14 degrees and hope something better happens. This slip, um, this is my bottle. I went to get it filled this week and did not make it to the shop where I go get it filled in time. Um, they were gone by the time I got there. So uh, I, was, I was running on less than five pounds. I don't have a heater or a gauge um, and it showed up in my ET and my mile per hour. That's down from 87 and uh, last week it went uh, 821 best and it was in the 830s on some other passes. Uh, my last pass of the night I borrowed Denzel's bottle and it had a little more than five pounds in it and uh, his bottle uh, truly helped. Uh, you can see it in the mile per hour in the ET. Um, I need to get my bottle filled before I make any more runs uh, but that's that's the rundown from last night. Uh, it was not uh, what I'd hoped. I really wanted a, a 790, but you know when you're not when you go unprepared, uh, you get <laughs> results you're not happy with. But that's okay. Um, now this whole car, um, maybe with the TPS right and the timing bumped, uh, it it'll get it'll run right. But I'm starting to think that it may be. Um, the timing chain that is keeping it from uh, running as good as it should. Um, I did a little bit of reading on the internet and a loose timing chain will retard your valve timing. And, and what that means is that you will lose bottom end, but you'll gain it on the top end. Uh, with a stock cam, stock heads, and a stock intake and throttle body, um, you're not going to benefit from retarded valve timing. So maybe, maybe, hopefully, I can put a, a new uh, timing chain and gears in it, and and it'll it'll pick up. I, I would hope so. I'll have a little more grunt, uh, and it'll 60 better. Uh, another thing it could be is is maybe a uh, bent dowel that goes in the cam gear. Uh, maybe, maybe that's um, got it a little out of whack, I, I don't know. But I, I thought surely with gears it would go, yeah, honestly I, I was hoping for a, a 9 on motor, uh, possibly an 890, I, I didn't think that was unreasonable. Um, so that's in line to happen, uh, time and chain of gears. Um, also, uh, I need to do a compression test and just see you know, how much compression it has. The, it's got over 170,000 miles and I've said it in a bunch of other videos that the car has not been well cared for. Um, so uh, hard miles or neglected miles, uh, uh, it's, it's not a spring chicken anymore. A really awesome thing that came out of last night. Of these bad boys. These are, let's see, three bar GT40 heads. Um, tickled to death to have them. You know, they're complete. They, they'll need to be took apart and checked and uh, give them a little bit of love, but happy to have them. Um, I've got a set of E7s tucked away in here. They're the original heads off my 95 and I have been putting off porting them for quite some time now. I just, I was going to port them and shave them. Really didn't want to do it. So happy to have these. Um, with those heads, I've got this Explorer intake. This also was on my 95 at one point. So that has a future on the 88. And then, uh, what's going on pig? So right here's a shop foreman. My man with a plan on his riding lawnmower. <laughs> anyway, that's where he sleeps. Uh, Ray hooked me up with this. Uh, my brother is a nationwide junkyard dog. If he ever goes out of town or out of state, uh, he goes to the junkyard. He, he picked this up for me. It's off a of Ford Explorer. 
So it's a 65. So I've just got to change the bottom piece, make it work on the Fox. And then I already had a 65 millimeter EGR spacer. So uh, uh, these parts have a future on the 88. I uh, don't know how soon they'll go on, but that is the plan. And uh, we'll keep you up to date. All right, guys, that was awesome. Richard did a ton of work. The math explanations were wonderful. Uh, even I could understand them. Um, the tips he gave, you know, use a six point combination wrench when you're taking out that cross pin bolt. I can imagine that would be the end of the world if he rounded that thing out. I've never, uh, haven't done too much rear end work though. Um, the numbers, I know we were expecting um, nines or the low or high eights on all motor and then with nitrous we'd get better. He did mention that the nitrous uh, bottle wasn't full. I'm oh, sorry, Ellie. Um, so we'll see what be becomes of that. Um, the timing chain he's, theory he said makes a ton of sense to me. Um, I have to mention that backing plate. That is awesome. That just shows what a motivated redneck can do <laughs> if they need to drill something. Uh, that's pretty cool. But Richard, thanks for filming it and sending it my way. And until next time. Ooh.